The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. So he went down to Joppa and found a ship bound for Tarshish. He paid the fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God, and they threw the cargo into the ship, uh, into the sea, to lighten the load of them. But Jonah, meanwhile, had gone below deck, into the hold, and was sound asleep. So the captain came to him and said, what do you mean, sleeping? Get up! Call on your God! Perhaps your God will take notice of us so that we do not perish. And the men were saying to each other, Let us draw straws to see on whose account this calamity has come upon us. And they drew straws, and the lot fell to Jonah. So they said to him, Tell us, on what account has this crisis come upon us? Where are you from? What is your country and your occupation? Of what people are you? And Jonah said, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. And the sailors were even more afraid, and they said to Jonah, What have you done? For they knew he was fleeing from the Lord, for he had told them. So they said to Jonah, what shall we do to you to make the sea quiet down for us? The sea was growing ever rougher and wilder. Jonah said, Pick me up and throw me into the sea, and then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know that it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. And instead, the sailors tried desperately to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew ever more tempestuous against them. And then they cried, O oh Lord, do not let us perish on account of this man's life, and do not hold us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O oh Lord, have done as you please. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea. The sea ceased from its raging. All the sailors feared the Lord. They made sacrifices and took vows. But the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish's belly, saying, In my distress, I called to the Lord. From the depths of the grave, I cried out to him, and you answered me. For you hurled me into the depths, into the heart of the seas. The currents swirled over me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. But I sank down to the depths. To the roots of the mountains I went down. The bars of the earth closed against me forever. The seaweed was wrapped around my head. But you brought my life up from the pit. Lord my God. Those who look to vain and worthless idols forsake their faithful loyalty, but I, with a voice of thanksgiving, I will praise the Lord my God. Salvation belongs to the Lord. The Lord spoke to the fish, and it spewed Jonah out onto dry land. word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah got up to go to Nineveh. Now the city of Nineveh was a great city, three days' journey in extent. So Jonah began to go into the city that first day, and he cried out, Yet forty more days! and Nineveh will be overthrown. When the people of Nineveh 
heard this, they believed God. And they called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. The word, and when the word came to the king of Nineveh, he got up from his throne, took off his royal robes, put on sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he published a decree throughout Nineveh, saying, By the decree of the king and his nobles, let no man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Let them not eat food or drink water, but let man and beast be covered in sackcloth, and let them cry mightily to God. Let everyone forsake his wicked ways and the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may yet change his mind and turn and relent from this disaster he's decreed for us. And when the Lord saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, he, he relented from the disaster he said he would send, and he did not do it. But the thing made Jonah angry. And he prayed to the Lord, Oh, Lord, is this not what I said while I was still at home in my country? This is why I sought to flee to Tarshish in the first place. For I know that you are a gracious and compassionate God, abounding in mercy and ready to relent from sending harm. And now, oh, Lord, take my life. For it's better for me to die than to live. But the Lord said to Jonah, Are you right? be angry. Jonah left the city and went to a place east of the city where he built a shelter and sat down in his shade and waited to see what would become of the city. And the Lord sent him a plant which he caused to grow up over Jonah to be shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was exceedingly happy about the plant. <laughs> but at dawn the next day, God sent a worm, which attacked the plant so that it withered. And as the sun came up that day, God sent a scorching east wind, and the sun beat down on Jonah's head until he grew faint and he longed to die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord said to Jonah, Are you right to be angry about the plant? And Jonah said, Yes, I am right to be angry. <laughs> angry enough to die. <laughs> but the Lord said to John, You are concerned about this plant, which you do no work for, nor did you make it grow. It sprang up in the night, and it died in the night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 people who do not know their right hand from their left, and many animals as well. 